Hey everybody, wanted to chat with you real quick this week about uh, kind of the path that led us to an Arctic Fox 990. It's a somewhat convoluted path and I think uh, folks are kind of curious sometimes how you end up with a, not how you, how we ended up with a truck camper. Because yeah. it's certainly not something a few years ago that I said, oh, oh yeah, it was we're never gonna have a I truck was. camper. Yeah, yeah. not yeah. ever. <laughs> so, um, if you hear some children in the background, we are boondocking near Capitol Reef um, National Park in Utah, near Torrey, Utah. It's a beautiful place. I don't know if you can see the view behind us. It's pretty fantastic. There it is. Um, but where we're boondocking, this is a perfect space for children. And so some kids are playing in the background. <laughs> we were like, oh, let's shoot some video real quick. It's such a nice location. And literally, yeah. like, as we're coming out to shoot the video, yeah. the, little kids came out to play. Yeah, so. they haven't been outside for hours, but now they are. Yep. Yeah, that's Great okay. Timing. They're yeah. adorable. They're like Star Wars out there fighting each other with wooden swords. We have different definitions of adorable. See, I think <laughs> cold, frosty beers are adorable. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, we wanted to chat with you guys today about um, why we decided to get a truck camper and um, then how we ended up choosing an Arctic Fox 990. So, um, I guess, see I even ma made notes because we actually planned today. So, um, first I kind of want to chat, like, when, our, when we first took time off of work, we decided that we wanted to have a couple year adventure, not working. We wanted to just live life to the fullest, whatever that meant in that moment. So we started out by beginning to hike the Pacific Crest Trail. We've both been backpackers for a lot of years and that's something that we feel passionate about. Um, turns out that I'm a really good backpacker, but I'm not a very good through hiker. <laughs> so after about 400 miles, um, we bailed from the trail long enough for me to buy a camper van. And then I followed Steve up the rest of the PCT. So what does that have to do with a truck camper? Well, being in a camper van for a summer and being in like the far outback um, country roads like gravel roads that kind of instilled in me a desire to have an RV for the very first time you know I thought that maybe when we we're retired actually retired maybe we'd get an RV but having a camper van for a summer even though Steve didn't actually fit in it very well and it had some drawbacks it still instilled in me that passion to want to travel and see the country in a different way so that kind of gave us the idea that we could do something truck camperish so after we stopped hiking on the PCT uh, we had hiked a total I don't know six seven months uh, our plan really after that was to head for Southeast Asia and that's what we did so we went to Southeast Asia and we hung out there for just a few months uh, and then COVID hits and State Department welcomed us to <laughs> y'all come home now, you hear? Yeah. So we came back to the U.S. Uh, March of 2020, end of March 2020, and we, we've sold our house, we've sold our belongings, our, most of our belongings, uh, sold our cars, uh, but we still had that pesky camper van that we had stuck in storage. So we took the camper van out of storage, kind of... Uh, de-winterized it and then it was just kind of hunkered down. Uh, we had a relative's house that was empty so we stayed in their house uh, for a few months while we were preparing that house to, to sell it. Uh, but we started watching videos of like what we could do. Uh, in the U.S. In the U.S. <laughs> I mean uh, we don't have anything against the U.S. but it was just our plan was just not really to be here for like six or nine months. Because you can travel around cheaper sometimes than being in the U.S. was a lot of it. And... Yeah. So uh, we started watching some, some videos of people that were traveling and we ended up on Taylor something, a, a Canadian chap who has a Arctic Fox 990 and really started enjoying his videos. Uh, watched a lot of them. Steve became a fanboy. Oh, Noelle's been itching to say that for a long time, a long time. 
there's a backstory to that, but we'll just <laughs> let it go. Yeah. So we were watching his videos and uh, I don't know that I was like stuck on the 990, but I was definitely stuck on, attracted, I guess, more than anything to the idea of uh, a truck camper. Uh, as Noel had said, you know, we're backpackers, we like to be outdoors. Uh, the big old RV is just not our scene. Uh, there, there's certainly benefits to the big old RV, uh, but for us wanting to get out and, and backpack and hike and that kind of stuff, it, it really seemed like a truck camper could be a good option for us. So after watching uh, way too many of Taylor's videos and then <laughs> a lot of other people's videos about their truck campers, their pop-up truck campers, or their Class C RVs, then we, we kind of got down to work and started looking at some truck campers. So we looked at some cl um, Class C RVs and we also looked at some other camper vans. And it just turns out that for a camper... <laughs> Just turns out that for the camper van especially, Steve's just too tall. He's 6'3", so it didn't really work out that great to um, think about getting back into another. Like we looked at Sprinters, we looked at some of the Revels. You know, they're pretty spendy. Um, but it just didn't seem like the thing. A Class C offered a lot of great advantages, probably the number one being that it generally has a cab over bed and another bed. Um, so that was appealing because then we could have guests come along with us. Um, but it was also just seemed big and it also seemed like, you know, their tires are street tires. They're not really off-road vehicles. We see them occasionally now as we're boondocking, but not very often. So for us, it just seemed like a truck camper might give us a little bit more flexibility in where we went. So when we were looking at the, uh, the Class C and the motorhome and the, the camper vans and whatnot, certainly the price point was a discussion for us. You know, mm -hmm. we had like a hard deck. We said, okay, like 30,000 bucks, this is what we're gonna spend. And when we looked at the, uh, the RVs, I guess the Class C's that were in the $30,000 range, uh, no. They were just no. old and a lot of miles yeah. and, and didn't seem to be a great fit for us. Yeah, I think truth be told though, had we known at that point uh, how much money we were going to end up spending <laughs> on the, uh, the camper truck and then the truck on top of it yeah. uh, and how high our budget would have gone, honestly it would have made for a different discussion I think about the Class yeah. C or the camper van. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're much much more invested in this than I think I certainly had any expectation in the beginning. Well, we quickly raised our budget from 30,000 to 40,000 and then we blew past that by Yeah. by a lot. By a lot. Yeah. yeah. I think last year as we found with uh, with COVID running rampant, uh the RV dealers were and truck camper folks, they were selling out their inventory and the word negotiate was it was just Greek to them. Yeah, like, for new and for used. Yeah, it, it like, was, there was no negotiation. I yeah. think it's the same this year in 2021 from what we see. Yeah. Like people just can't find, like they're waiting months and months for a new truck camper. Yeah, this so. year we're seeing truck campers uh, that are used, <laughs> two, three years used, and their prices are almost equal to a brand new unit. Yeah, and that was the same for us in 2020. Like we looked at several truck campers that were used but we found that for 3,000 more, we could actually buy a brand new one. So for us, having the warranty made it an easier choice to go with a, a newer truck camper. So one of the challenges, you know, once we kind of decided, you know, like, hey, we're gonna get a, a truck camper, uh, then really it's like, okay, what kind of truck do we need to get? Because like I said, we had sold our cars. And at, at one point, actually, we ended up selling our we had the uh, the camper van, and we just thought, well, you know, we'll just list it, and if it sells, then... And we're headed in the right direction. Yeah. And it, it sold really quick. <laughs> Way faster than we expected. Yeah. Yeah. We could have listed it for a few thousand more, <laughs> apparently. Yeah, we sold it too quick, and then we ended up renting a car. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so then the discussion of you know, looking at, at truck campers was, uh, 
what size of truck camper do we want to get to fit on a truck? So the truck, you can get a long bed or short bed. So then we had to decide really trying to narrow down on the truck campers, whether we wanted long bed, short bed. And the feedback from the sales guy seemed to really be that the preference for most folks was to have a uh, long bed truck with something like the 990 that are designed for uh, longer spaces. So that was kind of what we said, okay, we're gonna, we told the sales guy, like, we're, we're gonna buy the 990, uh, but then we really had to start looking for trucks. And the inventory in the area we were at at the time in Colorado was, uh, well, the used inventory, let yeah, me say. Yeah, used inventory. Uh, the inventory was, was just not good. So we ended up uh, getting our sons involved to kind of help, help us. Uh, it turns out that we, our oldest son knows everything there is to know about diesel Dodge Rams. He's, he's a bit of a gearhead when it comes yeah. to the Dodge Ram. He knows transmissions. He know, So we'll do a truck show or a truck video after we get back home and he's there so that yeah. he, he can kind of fill you in on here's the truck we got and here's why we got it. Yeah. So yeah. we got him involved. He gave us his pointers and he thought the, the what we ended up buying actually the 2005 Dodge Ram 3500 5.9 diesel dually long bed was our best choice. So we ended up, uh, we didn't hire a, uh, a broker. I'm not sure, it might have been just as good to hire a broker, but we found uh, like through Craigslist and that kind of stuff, or truck trader, we found a few different rigs around the country. That our son approved of. <laughs> yeah, so we, we'd find the listing, we'd send it to our son, he'd look at it and then kind of give us a, a neutral or a yes or a no. Yeah. Or sometimes he just didn't say anything. <laughs> so it was hard to know if his silence meant he was busy working or if his Probably silence busy meant, working. hey man, you found a real piece of crap. <laughs> didn't want to hurt her feelings. That probably was the case yeah. too. So we hired a local. We had, we, I think we, in the end, we narrowed our choice down to like three different rigs. We had a rig in Utah. We had a rig in Texas and we had a rig in Pennsylvania. Uh, the rig in Utah just fell apart. Uh, the asking price was was too high uh, based on the inspection results. Uh, the rig in Pennsylvania, uh, the inspector, I think in his own kind way, the inspector said sometimes people tend to lie about trucks they're trying to sell, so you need to be careful. We took that to mean that he thought the person that was selling it was lying and we just... Yeah wrote that one off. And then we had the, the truck in Texas that we went ahead and purchased. So we purchased the truck in Texas. Uh, we were After actually, we got it inspected. Yeah, we had it inspected. We were okay. actually going to go down and drive it from Texas to Colorado to pick up the, uh, the camper. Uh, but at that time, Houston was like a, just a raging hotspot for COVID. So we paid, I think, about $800 and had the truck shipped up to us uh, in Colorado. So... So that was kind of weird, buying a truck sight unseen. Yeah, I, I talked to the and sales guy. And yeah. The sales guy said this for for them, this was how they were selling about 70 to 80 percent of their used dually trucks. It was just sight unseen uh, because the inventory is so low. I mean, for us, I think we bought the, the truck around 25,000 uh, bucks. When we looked at new, <laughs> like 2020, <laughs> or at the time even 2021 uh diesel dually long beds uh our price range was getting closer to 70 eighty thousand dollars for our price range well the because, price range yeah because that was like way yeah. out of hours but. yeah so that, that honestly it, it's just money that's why we ended up buying the used truck i would have loved to have uh, to have purchased a brand new one oh yeah but, me too from a quiet standpoint and a comfort standpoint yeah but I mean, when we go rattling down the road, uh, we yeah. know this is a used truck. <laughs> and it's, However, we also go down some roads that I might not want to take a brand new truck. Yeah, so, this is true. We've gotten some scratches. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 2005, so we've gotten some scratches. We, yeah, I know. We, we have some, some nasty dirt roads. There's branches hanging off on the side, and you can hear them scraping down the truck. And <laughs> it's not ideal. It's nope. not our plan to do that, but... 
we're not losing sleep over it either. Like, <laughs> yeah. it happens. So some things in truck campers are the same. Um, things like electric jacks or the roof rack, um, air conditioning, awnings, that kind of stuff, it's all the same. Most of them have some level of solar on top and some level of an inverter. Some may have a generator, some don't. Um, but all of that stuff seemed pretty standard. Like, I didn't necessarily think that Lance truck campers had a better jack system or Arctic Fox had a better wet bath system. Like, it didn't really seem that way. So it kind of just came down to more of preferences um, on quality and on storage for us since so many of the options are the same no matter which truck camper you get. So we narrowed down our truck camper choices to, I'm looking at my notes here, <laughs> to the Cirrus 990 by New Camp. Now that camper we liked a lot, a lot, a lot. It reminded us oh, um, very much of the inside of a boat that we sailed, a Benito 39 footer, I don't know, 40 footer, 36 footer, do you remember? I don't know. So we sailed a Benito, um, a new Beneteau for a couple of years and the cabinetry inside of the sailboat is very similar to the cabinetry inside that truck camper. It was sleek, it was kind of, um, they called it a European style um, interior. It really appealed to us aesthetically but the, um, the opening to the bed is smaller because they were non-slides. So the Cirrus 920 by New Camp was the one that we really, really liked. Aesthetically, the one we liked the best was a Granite 2 RL. It's made by Rugged Mountain Custom RV. So we only saw one of these in all of the camper tours we took. It looks like a farmhouse kitchen. It looks new. It looks like somebody um, made it themselves, you know, like a camper, camper van build. It looked like something I would like to live in. It was really, really pretty, cozy, um, but it was really super heavy because they didn't use some of the lightweight woods. They used wood so for cabinet doors and all of that. So didn't turn out to be our final choice. Um, we really liked the Lance 995. Lance is a well-made truck camper maker. They've been around forever. Um, People who we've met who own them really like them. They're good campers. They're they're really good. But for us, we didn't really care for the um, dinettes. Most of them were like a, uh, I don't know what you call it, more like a U-shaped dinette than the facing each other dinette. We didn't really care for that. And they really seem stuck in the 1980s. We did not like that kind of interior design. The interior design for most of them was 1980s, actually. But Lance seemed to be a little bit older. Some of the things that we really liked, uh, the cathedral ceiling, ceiling, which Noelle may have mentioned, uh, I'm six foot three. I've still got above my head uh, almost a foot of space. I don't recall that the Lance had that much room above my head, maybe six inches. Uh, the Cirrus might have been about the same, about six inches. So it's just nice just to have a little bit of space above my head, you know, that I can stand up straight, I can stretch if I want. Uh, the camper van that we had, it was it was tight. I couldn't stand up straight. Uh, yeah. So definitely the, the 990 from a headroom aspect was really good. With the slide, it gave us the uh, illusion of having more space when you take the slide out. Uh, you definitely do have more space uh, if you leave the slide in. Uh, it, it's really, really tight. I think I can say in all honesty, if you're looking at trying to decide between a slide and non-slide, you really need to take a, a hard look at how you're going to use it. If we were doing like all city boondocking, I wouldn't get a slide out. There's, there's no point. Uh, but for the kind of camping we're doing where we're boondocking, uh, we're generally out around no one <laughs> except small children. <laughs> yeah, for being, for being out in the middle of nowhere, uh, it's perfect to have a slide. Uh, it gives us extra room. We can move around. Uh, we like it. 
Uh, so the cathedral ceilings were a big selling point for us. The, the slide outs, the storage around the bed. So there's a large storage locker by each head of the bed. Honestly, right now in our storage lockers, we have backpacking stuff. Uh, so I think from a practical standpoint, the storage locker has been less beneficial uh, than I thought it would be. Uh, you're supposed to hang shirts in it or something like that. All I have in here right now is like t-shirts and stuff or a sweatshirt or two. So there's really nothing for me to hang. Hey, good morning, everyone. So our GoPro battery died in the middle of our filming last night. So I tried to find our backup battery, couldn't find the backup battery. So, okay, we'll just recharge our GoPro and we'll start again this morning. So here we are. It's a new day. We're getting ready to kick our way down the road to another national park. Thought we'd finish this video though real quick before we do. So we're talking about things that we liked about the Arctic Fox 990. And it turned out the, the storage was a big deal for us. Uh, there's a lot of interior storage that we didn't see on some of the other uh, units that we looked at. Be that the Northern Lights or the Cirrus or uh, there's, there's one homegrown model that we looked at. Uh, they didn't seem to have the storage or they didn't have the storage quite laid out the way that the Arctic Fox did. We liked that we had, there's a long storage container next to each side of the bed. And then at the top of the bed on each side, there's like a little storage locker. I haven't found those storage lockers to be that advantageous to me. I've shoved all my backpacking stuff in there. So uh, that takes up half of the room. The bottom of that storage locker, I have maybe 20 books. Uh, I haven't read all those books uh, because they're at the bottom of my storage locker underneath all of my backpacking stuff. So I think that that particular area was designed really for people to hang clothes in. I don't have any clothes right now that I hang. I have a jacket uh, and I typically hang it on our bathroom door. I'm looking up and over because I'm, I'm facing the, the truck camper this morning. So I may hang a jacket up or a sweater or something like that, uh, but I don't have any shirts that I'm hanging up. These are the kinds of shirts I'm wearing. Uh, I'm wearing shorts or jeans or nothing formal at all that would really, I'd be concerned about it being wrinkled. So those those closets, which I thought would be really important to me, have turned out to be not so important at all, aside from just being uh, a storage area. One of the other things that we did like about the Arctic Fox was the, uh, they call it the Arctic Fox landing. So on the landing itself, uh, when we were looking at the, the units uh, on the showroom floor, uh, they didn't have this particular option on it. So, and they had the unit set very close to the floor. So right before we bought it, I asked them to raise the unit to what our truck height would be. And when they raised the unit, uh, we found out that Noelle wasn't gonna be able to get in the unit unless she pole vaulted into <laughs> the unit. So uh, suddenly we had a bit of a, a challenge of what to do. Uh, the Arctic Fox, the add-on stairs back here are an option, or we could uh, upgrade the entire unit to the Legacy Edition, and then the, the stairs were included. So the Legacy Edition was, I don't know, like another 3000 bucks compared to what we were paying. Uh, the stairs by themselves were like 1500 bucks. So for the extra money, we got the Legacy Edition. Uh, I'm not really sure what the big deal was on the Legacy Edition. Uh, we got a different color of the exterior, which is gray. Uh, and then we got the double paned windows. So one of the options was with the Legacy Edition is the, uh, the frameless windows. The frameless windows are double paned. So you're supposed to have a better insulating factor, uh, a little more reflective. Uh, within a month, month and a half, our first window broke its seal uh, within two, three months after that, we had three other windows uh, that had broke their seal uh, as far as the, the insulating, whatever the gases they have between them. So we've now been waiting, I don't know, three months uh, for replacement windows from the manufacturer. Uh, the dealer that we, we bought this from had told us expected to be a six to nine month wait uh, to get the replacement windows. So I don't know uh, if I would bother, honestly, again, with the Legacy Edition. Uh, we needed it just simply for the, the fact of the stairs for Noel to be able to get into the back. Beyond that, I'm not sure that there was uh, a lot of value add when I look at what I would consider to be the relatively poor performance of the windows. 
I'm not sure that I, I see that it was worth the upgrade that we did. So I would say that I agree with Steve and that the storage was a huge selling point for the Arctic Fox. Um, really liked the bedside storage, uh, kitchen storage. There just seems to be a lot of places to put things and that really is what sold me on an Arctic Fox. Um, we looked at an 865, which is a non-slide, and the 990, which we ended up with. And the big difference there for me is the entrance to the bed. On the 865, the non-slide, it's a smaller, narrower entrance to the bed, which means that from experience in the camper van, I would be climbing over Steve's legs in order to get out of the bed at night if I have to go to the bathroom. So, or look at stars. <laughs> um, so for me, the wider bed entrance was important, which leaned us a little bit more to the 990 instead of the 865. And finally, I think one reason we chose the Arctic Fox was that for me, it was important that they're made in Oregon. Northwood Manufacturing is in La Grande, Oregon. That's our home state. So I kind of like the idea of um, shopping local, even though we were buying it in Colorado, it was still made in our home state. So employing our um, fellow Oregonians, I kind of like that about it. So for me, those I think are the biggest reasons for going with Arctic Fox in general and the 990 in particular is the bed opening. So I hope this is kind of helpful to you. We're trying to explain kind of our thought process and the steps we went through to end up with the, the Arctic Fox 990. Uh, for us, we we're in a bit of a time crunch. So we didn't spend years uh, planning and spreadsheets and evaluating. I think start to finish, our decision was made probably in the span of maybe two, two and a half months. Yeah. Yeah, so we went and looked at a lot of models. We drove all over the place in Colorado looking at different uh, manufacturers. Uh, but in the end, for us, the, the Arctic Fox kind of won out for the reasons we listed. Anyway, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Join us on our next episode when we struggle with the oven and head out for some hot weather hiking.